Welcome to part three of the How to Ride a Scooter tutorial series. Today we'll be focusing on using the throttle and using the brakes. So today what we'll be doing, uh, I want to go through in great detail about how to get used to the throttle, using the throttle so you can accelerate and take off and also maintain speed, but then slow down using the throttle. But then also when it comes to uh, controlling your speed with the brakes, the rear brake, the front brake, and also coming to a stop using the brakes. So this is part three in the How to Ride a Scooter series. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I'll talk about the throttle to start with. So this throttle here, you'll notice that it's spring-loaded. So it always coils back to this off position. Uh, so when you're riding, it's important to have the wrists in the right position so that you can apply a little bit of gas, a little bit of throttle, and then back off. Now we're not going, this is a beginner problem, on, off, on, off, we're trying to avoid that. We're easing the throttle on, and then easing the throttle off. Now, I remember in part one, I talked about how, how, how much pressure you apply to the throttle. Imagine you've got a pet bird, you've got a budgie or a canary, you're holding it gently. You don't want to kill that bird, but you don't want to let it uh, too loose so it flies away. So we're being quite sensitive here. So this first ex exercise is basically just applying a little bit of throttle, and then releasing the throttle. Applying the throttle, releasing the throttle. You're gonna apply enough throttle so the bike goes, and then you're gonna back off. So we're putting 100% attention onto our acceleration, our throttle, and then just backing off. So this exercise, I'm just gonna take off, get my feet up, back off, and then put my feet back down once the bike has, has run out of steam. So this is what it looks like. So this is important, important in this first lesson to do it on a flat road. So you're putting on a little bit of throttle, and then backing off. A little bit of throttle, backing off. A little bit more throttle, backing off. So you need to have enough throttle that the bike stays upright. So we're talking about when your bike is going slowly, it'll want to just fall over if it's stationary. But when the bike is moving, we have what's called centrifugal force, which, which basically means that the bike wants to stay upright. So when you're actually, the bike is actually moving, the bike wants to stay upright. So it's important that you actually get going fast enough that the bike stays upright. If you're going super slow, the bike will want to fall over. So get enough speed so that you can feel that the bike stays upright and you've got control over that throttle. That, that's the first part of this lesson. Okay, so the next, once you get comfortable with the throttle, so you're easing the throttle on, easing it off. Try to get up to five kilometers per hour, 10 kilometers per hour, 20. But what's gonna happen sooner or later, you're gonna get enough speed that when you back off your throttle, Momentum's gonna carry you, carry you, carry you, and you're gonna roll a long way, and you wanna stop a bit earlier. That's when we start to introduce the rear brake. So on our bike, our left hand lever here is our rear brake, and our right hand lever is our front brake. So what we're gonna do with this next exercise is use your throttle, get your speed going so the bike's upright and it's moving along nicely, back off the throttle, while your bike is then rolling, you're then going to apply the rear brake. Now the principle we use for applying the brake is what we call set up and squeeze. So you'll notice with your brake, to start with, there's a little bit of free play. And right now, nothing's actually happening at this point in time. So what we're trying to do before we apply the brake is we're trying to make contact. So imagine this, um, the brakes. Now if you get back down here, you'll probably see 
Okay, here's probably a better illustration. You'll see here there's a disc, this silver disc right here. The brake pads apply apply pressure to this disc to help you stop and s at, slow down and stop. So what happened? So what happens with that silver disc? That silver disc is rotating as your wheel is moving, and then what, when you apply this lever here, brake pads move in and out like this. So this is what your uh, brakes are doing. Now at the start, nothing's happening, no contact has been made. So the principle to start with, before you start trying to put your brakes on, is you want to make contact. So this is the setup stage. So with all available fingers, four fingers, you're going to apply a little bit of pressure until you feel something's happening. So this is a sensitive stage. So you're feeling, okay, where is contact being made? Once you feel contact being made, then you can apply the pressure. So that's the squeeze part. So the first part is the setup. Wait till you feel contact. Once you've got contact, you can then squeeze and apply the pressure and slow yourself down. So this takes a little bit of time. So you're not grabbing the brake to stop. You're setting it up, getting a feel of things, and then applying the brake. Two-stage braking is what we're, we're, we're using uh, the principle of. Now, another important part of this two-stage braking is when you're actually at out in the traffic, when you apply the setup stage, your brake light goes on. So whoever's following you, whether it's a car, a bus, whatever, they're gonna see your brake lights come on. So they say, they, they're thinking, oh, that bike's got its brake lights on, I better back off a little bit. So it's actually alerting the people behind that I'm coming, I'm slowing down or I'm coming to a stop. So that's another important part of the setting up the brake and then squeezing the brake on. So for this next exercise, you're gonna take off, then back off your throttle, set up the brake, and then squeeze it on until you come to a stop. I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so step one, a little bit of throttle. Step two, back off the throttle. Step three, set up, and squeeze, come to a stop. That's what we're gonna practice. I'll do it a little bit more momentum. Okay, so what you'll notice, I'm taking off, I'm backing off the throttle, and then I'm applying this brake. When my back bike actually comes to a stop, I then put my left leg out and put my weight onto my left leg. I'm not stopping with my feet, which is a beginner problem. Uh, when they're coming to a stop and they feel like they don't have control, they try to put their feet out or they try to use their shoes to stop the bike. Remember, your legs and your feet and your shoes aren't gonna stop the bike. It's going to cause a lot of problems. You need to use the actual brakes for stopping or slowing the bike down. So your feet are used for when you actually bring your bike to a stop and then you rest onto your left leg. Now the reason we use the left leg is it comes from using uh, riding bikes with gears. Because if you've got a manual motorcycle, your gears will be on with controlled by your left foot and your rear brake will be controlled by your right foot. So you need your foot on that brake. So your, le your right leg will always stay on the bike. So when you're coming to a stop, you don't need gears. So you come to a stop and then you drop your bike to the left leg. So I'll show that, I'll show that to you step by step. We're gonna take off, back off the throttle, set up the brake, squeeze the brake on, drop to our left leg.
Okay, the next part of this lesson is we're going to use the right hand side brake, which is the front brake. So we're going to use the same exercise basically, but instead of the rear brake, we're going to use the front brake. So you're going to take off, back off the throttle, set up the front brake, squeeze the front brake on, come to a stop, drop to our left side. Okay, you'll notice also this this video, these video, this video series is aimed at the beginner. You'll notice what I did. I'm focusing on going on a straight line to start with, so I'm taking off in a straight line, and I'm stopping in a straight line. We're going to work out turns and cornering, and do all sorts of exercise like figure eights and U-turns and slalom rides later on, and even counter steering. But to start with, if you're a beginner, just get used to the throttle. You don't need any other distractions. Get used to the throttle, rear brake throttle front brake once you get comfortable with those two brakes and using both brakes at the, at the same time is which is what we're going to do now we're then going to do turns but you'll notice what i've done i'm going in a straight line so you start in a back street somewhere like here i'm out in in, uh, in a back street and kind of a uh, a dead end street i just go in a straight line a straight line and a straight line once i get to the end of the street or where it's no longer safe i turn the engine off and I do a U-turn with the bike, I just walk the bike around. Start the engine up and try again. So for a beginner, this is what I would recommend. So go on a straight line, turn the engine off, turn it around. Go on a straight line. So you're just focusing on the throttle and the brake to start with. Okay, third part of the braking. We're used to the rear brake, we're used to the front brake. Now what we're gonna actually do is use both brakes at the same time. So we're gonna get going with the bike, we'll get a little bit of speed up, and then we're gonna apply both brakes. So you're getting used to doing two things at once, basically. And that's actually an important part of a beginner stage. When you're a learner, not doing too many things at the same time. So you'll notice with this lesson that I'm talking about today, we're doing the throttle. We're just focusing on one thing. We back off the throttle. We're focusing on one thing. We use a brake. We're focusing on the brake. We're not doing too many things at the same time. This is the beginner. This is an important part of the beginner phase. So this next lesson, we're going to take off, use both brakes. Take off, use both brakes. Okay, next part of the lesson, once you get used to using both brakes, is you want to start trying to stop at a specific point. So usually in a traffic situation, in a traffic situation, you're going to be stopping at a stop sign or a red light or in a giveaway situation or a pedestrian crossing. So we need to start getting used to pulling up our bike at a specific point. So this is a good point in time where you start to actually designate parts in the road where you can stop and then drop to your left side. So I'm going to use some cracks in the road here. So I'm going to take off, get a little bit of speed going and bring the bike to a stop just before the crack in the road. So this is a next exercise you can practice on your own. So a crack in the road just like this one, I'm going to stop at the next crack in the road. Using both brakes. Okay, next thing I want to talk about is a little bit of the difference between the rear brake and the front brake. Uh, the rear brake, we're actually going to use that a fair bit, particularly at the beginner stage. Now, as you'll notice, the front brake, look at where I'm sitting. My body weight is mostly over this rear brake. So this is where most of your weight is. So it's this rear brake is designed for that heavy load. The front brake, there's actually not much 
weight at the front. Uh, this is also, if you remember our first lesson where it talks about posture. You need to be sitting back with most of your weight on the rear wheel. And that way that braking will work, will work most efficiently when you've got your weight on that rear, rear wheel. If you've got your weight too much forward, there's not gonna be enough load on that rear and you're gonna to put too much load on your front. Now, just so you're aware of the difference, as I'm moving along, the rear brake actually apply, applies quite gently. Whereas the front, what's gonna happen when I'm using the front brake, the front brake momentum and inertia comes into effect and you'll, you'll, you'll see the front wheel dip a little bit. Now, a common problem with beginners is they grab the front brake, all the weight shifts forward, and then the wheel turns and then they fall off. So I've seen many a people, uh, I've seen many a beginner fall off their bike because they grab the front brake, the wheel turns and then they fall off. So this is why I'm suggesting use your brake, rear brake to start with. Get familiar with that. This is not where you're gonna, you're not gonna have any accidents at low speeds using your rear brake. But you can if you grab that front brake. So attention should be on your rear brake. So, what I'm just gonna show you a little bit at speed now, is I'm gonna bring the bike, bike to a stop, and I'm gonna use the front brake. And you'll see how the, mo the weight, the inertia, the momentum shifts to the front of the bike as I do it. So you can see how the bike, I was using only the front brake then, you can see how the bike moves to the front wheel. The weight of the bike moves to the front wheel. So, what we're going to do, the best braking technique is for using both brakes. You can stop at a short space of time if you're using both brakes efficiently. I'm going to do a demonstration where I stop. I'm going to get the speed up to something consistent and then use the front rear brake. Get the speed up to the same point, use the front brake. Then I'm going to get the speed up to the same point and use both brakes. So you can compare the difference between rear brake only, front brake only, and then both brakes at the same time. I was at 20 kilometers per hour and that was using the rear brake only. I'm done then. This is actually important when you're getting familiar with the brake, if you push your brake on too hard, your bre rear brakes will lock up. In this bike here in particular, it's got anti-lock braking system, ABS. So when the brake feels it's locking, it will release. Lock, release, lock, release. Because it wants to prevent a complete lock up of the rear wheel. So as you're a beginner, if this happens, this is actually okay. This is the important stage because you're getting familiar with your bike. It's much, much, much better if you lock the wheel up for a moment and then release a little bit in the back streets compared to if you're in the traffic. So what to remember, if you put your brake on and it's too tight and you feel the rear locking up, ease off a little bit and then apply the pressure again. You don't need to completely release your brake. Just ease off a little bit and then apply and try and find that right point where it's not locking up. Anyway, I, I tried to stop as fast as I could. I was about 20, 25 kilometers per hour then. And I used that crack just back there was when I applied the brake. So this is using my rear brake. So it took this long for me to stop and I even locked the wheel up at the same time. I'm gonna try that one more time. I'm gonna get, try and get the speed up to about 20 kilometers per hour. When I get to that crack in the road, I'm gonna use, bring the bike to a, a stop, a controlled stop as swiftly as I can using only the rear brake. Okay, so that was 20 kilometers per hour. I applied the brake at that rear crack and it's taken this long to bring my bike to a stop. I'm gonna do the same thing with only the front brake this time. So I actually stopped in a shorter space of time then using only my front brake. So that's where I applied the brake at that crack and it's taken me this long. Before when I used my rear brake, I finished at about here. So this time I'm going to use both brakes and see how swiftly I can stop, bring the bike to a controlled, 
controlled stop with both brakes. So that's where I applied both brakes at that crack and look how short, how such a short distance I could actually bring my bike to a stop. So this, this is where I finished using both brakes. This was where I finished using my front brake. This was where I finished using my rear brake. So the moral of the story, you're most efficient at stopping when you're using both brakes. So the exercise is you for you to get familiar with your brakes, get familiar with your throttle. Okay, the next part of this lesson, now you're familiar with the throttle and you're familiar with the rear brake, front brake and using both brakes. I just want to go into more detail with the takeoff. Now I'm going to show you a technique that we use when we're doing a takeoff which involves using the brake and then the throttle. So what happens when you've got your rear brake on, your bike's not moving anywhere. So you've got this bike fully under control. So if you're sitting at a set of red lights, you'll be in a position like this. Your left foot's down and your rear brake is on. When the light goes to green, what we're gonna do is use a little bit of throttle and then ease the brake off. Now the reason we have our brake on is to get you familiar with using the bike mechanisms to control the bike, not your legs. When you're on a flat road, it's important for a beginner, get familiar with your bike's throttle and brake on a flat road to start with, and you're not worrying about gravity and the roll of the bike. But in a real life context, you're gonna stop sometimes, and there's gonna be a hill going down, or a hill gonna be up, or it could be sideways, whatever it might be, you're gonna get unfamiliar kind of uh, unusual terrain. So it's important to have this bike under control while you're stationary. So this is why we use this rear brake. So picture this, you've just come to a stop, front brake, rear brake is applied, and you've dropped to your left leg. Release this amp. Little bit of throttle till you hear the engine wants to go. You feel that the bike wants to go a little bit. Then you ease your rear brake off, so you're starting to move. Then the next time. So bring your bike to a controlled stop. Release the front brake. A little bit of throttle. Ease your brake off. Bike wants to go. More throttle. Okay, I've come to a stop. Left leg's down. Release the front brake. A little bit of throttle the brake off and then more throttle. So the next part of the lesson I would recommend you find yourself a little bit of a hill of somewhere, some kind of a gentle incline or decline where you use your rear brake, a little bit of throttle, ease the rear brake off and then apply more throttle. So get used to taking off using the rear brake for to hold your bike in place and then take off. So this is important hill stage, uh, sorry, this is important to get familiar with a hill start. Now I want to reiterate that it's very important that practice all of this in your back streets. If you're a beginner, get familiar in the back streets. And again, back to that principle of doing one thing at a time. A little bit of throttle so you can focus and listen and feel what's going on. Release the brake, focus on the brake. And then the third part is take off with your throttle. So you're doing it in one piece at a time. So this is, well, after a while, you'll get very, very familiar and it'll merge and blend into one and you won't even realize you're doing it. But this video is, is aimed at absolute beginners. So that's why I'm breaking up into piece by piece. Beginners are often very, very worried about when they're in traffic and the light goes green, trying to get the bike under control before they take off. There's, a, there's actually a lot of pressure. So I'm gonna give you a couple of tips here to deal with that kind of pressure so you can take off like a pro at a set of lights. Uh, first of all, don't worry about anyone else. If you're worrying about the car or the truck or the motorcycle behind, your mind is not on your bike. So it's best to shut all of those things out and you focus on your bike. Um, so you're focusing 100% on your bike, you're not in a rush. You just take off gently at your own steady space. Just remember the people around you, they're also stationary. So they're not rushing up from behind at all. So keep in mind, they see you there, they see the bikes there. So 
they're actually going to give you a lot more leeway than perhaps your mind might think. So just take your time, shut them out. The second tip for taking off at a set of lights is predict the green light. So a beginner's mistake is you're sitting there at the lights and then all of a sudden the light goes green and it's like, oh no, now I've got to go, what do I do? If you can predict the green light or when it's time to go, you can actually get your bike set up early. So imagine this scenario, it's a red light. I can see all the traffic's going, traffic's going, traffic's going, and then I see the traffic stop. I know I'm gonna get the green light next. So before I get the green light, I'm gonna get my accelerator ready. So the, it's still a red light, but I get my, my throttle ready. So when the light actually does go green, I'm not worrying about my throttle, I just release the brake and then I take off. So you're predicting the light. So they're my two tips. When you're amongst the traffic, don't worry about anyone else. So you can focus your attention on your own bike and the mechanisms of your bike. And the second tip is get yourself ready before it's time to take off. So imagine a scenario, you've stopped at a pedestrian crossing the person's walking, 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 walking. Before they get to the edge of the road, you can get your throttle ready in the ready position. So once they step off the road and onto the curb, you can just release the brake and go. So get your, get your throttle ready before the green or before the time to go. So all you have to focus is on, you, all you have to focus on is releasing the brake and then taking off. So they're the two tips to overcome. One of the big, big, big fears with a new rider is I get pa I get panicked and I worry when it's time to go. Particularly, uh, this also comes to when people stall bikes with uh, when they're using a manual bike as well. A big fear is, a big concern is when people stall the engine and then they've got to start it up again and then they've got to go and then the worry and worry builds and builds. So this is my tip to overcome that problem.